just say we want to be in communion with you. We want to be in that place of intimacy with you. We want to live in that place of intimacy. Every moment of the day, God. Not just gathering here for a few moments, God. Not just on Wednesday service. Not just on Sunday morning, God. We want to live in communion with you. our hearts cry this is our prayer this morning God that you would live in us that you would move through us that you would be in us Jesus that you would be so much so much in us Father, we want to come to that place of surrender where we lay down our will, we lay down our rights, we lay down everything and anything that is not of you. Won't you come this morning and fill us? We need you. We need you. We need you. We need you, Jesus. We need to overflow. We need to overflow. Come and fill us. This morning, let the oil, the oil of the Holy Spirit, just overflow out of us, out of our being. There's a lost, dying, broken world. that is in need of a Savior, that is in need of you. You want to so much fill us so that when they encounter us, that they encounter you. That is your heart. That's why you came to die, to give your life so that we may be with you. No longer separated from the Father. You're about relationship. You're about intimacy. You're not about religion. Forgive us. Forgive me when we've made it about religion, when we've made it about something other than you. God, we say we need you this morning. We need you so desperately. I don't ever want to stop being desperate for him. I don't ever want to think, I don't ever want to come to a place where I think I can do it in my own strength. Oh, beloved, oh, beloved, how he loves. I feel his father heart over us in this room. This morning, his father's love. How he loves each and every one of you. He's praying for you. He's interceding for you. That you may know the fullness of his love. <laughs> Father, we want to know the width, the depth, the weight, the length of your love. We want to know. We want to know your love. We want to experience that love. We don't want just head knowledge. We want to experience. We want to come into experiential love where we experience your love every moment of the day. <sighs> Thank you for being here.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. We just say, have your way. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in greater measure. We ask that you would increase your presence in this room, that you would increase your presence among us. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you. We say, have your way this morning. Have your way today. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. We say, you have full permission. We give you full permission to do what you want to do, to speak into our lives, to bring alignment into our lives, to bring healing into our bodies, into our souls, into our minds. We say, do what only you can do, Holy Spirit. during worship I saw a picture of a heart and I feel like Jesus wants to heal some hearts this morning this heart was a little battered a little bruised and Jesus just wanted to invite you to come sit on his lap And I saw as you were just spending time with him and as he was holding you and holding your heart, that supernatural healing was taking place. Just as you were letting him love on you, it was just an incredible picture. So I just want to invite you this morning just to sit on Papa's lap. Just to sit on his lap and let him embrace you and love on you. We never get too old to be daddy's girl. Daddy's boy, you never get too old. You don't grow out of that. (laughs) Just let him love on you this morning. Even as I'm sharing, I feel like I have a word from the Lord for us this morning, even as I'm sharing, just picture yourself just sitting in daddy's lap. Because he loves you so much. He loves you so much. He's so proud of you. He's so pleased with you. He's not forgotten about you. He sees your situation. He sees what you're going through. Not one thing gets by him. Not one thing. (laughs) What an amazing God. What an incredible God. He knows every hair that's on your head, every breath that you take when you sit and when you stand. What love. What love. What love. He gave his only son for you and for me. What love. What love. What love would do that? up here. His love will do that. His love will wreck wreck you. Wreck me in the best way possible. Amen. I was so good. Thank you, worship team. So good, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Manny. Manny, I just, I felt like um, I had a few words for people in this house. So I want to go ahead and do that before I start this message. Actually, for me, Annie, I I was really just sensing Father Heart for you this morning, and I just want to just, I feel like the Lord is just saying, you're a father. 
your father. You are a spiritual father in this house, who you are. And so we just honor you as a father in this house. We honor you as a spiritual father. We honor the authority on your life. We honor your humility. We honor the pastoral call on your life, Manny. We honor you in this house. It's not about the title and the role that you have in this house. You've come to serve this house. And you would serve it if you were on the highest place, and you would serve it if you're in the lowest place. I feel like you one that you've won, you've been tested and tried. You're one that's been proven. And so we just honor you in this house as a father. And I just, just pray for a release. Like I know there's things in your heart that the Lord has given you. And I just pray for a release of those things that God has put in your heart. Dreams that he has put in your heart. A release. I see him breathing life on that. Breathing on that. And so we speak life to that in Jesus' name. Life on those dreams that are in your heart, Manny. Even before the foundations of the world. He put those desires in you. He put those dreams in you uniquely. He has formed you in your mother's womb uniquely. He has shaped you and formed you. And so I thank you, Father, for Manny, God, and the likeness of Jesus Christ in this man. And we bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. And then for Pam, I just... I saw for you just an interesting picture. It was like a growing bud, a plant, and it was green, so it's good. It resembles life, and I saw just a leaf on it, and I just feel like the Lord is saying, like, there's a new leaf or, like, a new chapter or something that's coming to you that's going to bring life and nourishment, not just to your own soul but to other people, and it's kind of like a new beginning. So it was like a baby plant you know, but the, it was already budding. It was already starting to, to, to take place. And so I don't know all that that means, but I feel like it's going to bring nourishment to other people. It's not only going to, to feed um, your own soul, but it's going to feed the souls. I feel like there's something about souls that's going to feed the souls of others. So I just bless you with that. And, uh, oh, Kristen. I also, I felt like, I just want us to just stretch our hands out to Kristen. Um, I felt like this morning there was a spirit of discouragement. It was actually a spirit. It wasn't, I know we struggle with discouragement sometimes, but I feel like a spirit of discouragement was trying to attach itself to you. And so I just want to cover, I know this is a safe place. I want to just cover Kristen. I want to cover our sister, Lord, and just pray for her and intercede for her. Pray for her like you would pray for your own daughter. Pray for her like you would pray for a sister, and let's just lift her up right now. We just command that spirit of discouragement to leave right now in the name of Jesus. We say you have no place, you have no authority over Kristen's life. God, we close any doors to the enemy that may have been open, and I plead the blood of Jesus over her. I plead the blood of Jesus, and I speak protection over you, Kristen. I declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment will be condemned, will be shown to be in the wrong, and stopped, and we just pray for a hedge of protection around her right now. In the name of Jesus, we intercede for her. We plead the blood of Jesus. We thank Thank you, Father, that your plans will prosper and succeed for her in Jesus' name. Your plans for her are good and not of evil. To give her a future and a hope and her final outcome. I thank you for that, God. We bless you, Kristen. We bless your spirit. We bless you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to share about the life of Joseph. So, I shared um, part one last month, if you get a chance to <clears throat> go back and listen to that. I'm going to just do a little summary. I'm sharing part two, and I'm hoping just to wrap it up. I haven't done, like, a series here before in the morning, um, so I just feel like the Lord just, you know, put that on my heart. So I broke up in two sections because it's quite a lot, and I could actually probably <laughs> go a lot longer on this, but I did a series on the life of David when I taught with the interns, and I think I split that up into three uh, but I really just felt to, to speak about the life of Joseph. So I want to just summarize really just quickly here what I shared last month when I shared about the life of Joseph, and I just talked about how your code of favor makes you a target to the enemy. 
we talked about how his brothers threw him in a pit and then Reuben, his brother, had plans to go back and get Joseph out of the pit. Uh, but before he could do that, his other brother sold him into slavery. Um, so, you know, we talked about pits and we just, you know, we stayed on there for a little while. But I just want to just um, paint a picture for us with this story. You know, his brothers threw him in a pit. I just want us to just take a moment just to think about that. Jacob, you have three brothers right? Can you imagine your brothers throwing you in a pit um, and discussing about, you know, taking your life? And I mean, this, this is like real, like this is, you know what I mean? Like this actually happened, like just to bring it close to home. And, you know, before they could take his life, one brother stepped in and they said, let's put him in a pit. And then before a brother could come and rescue him, um, the other brother sold him to slavery into the land of Egypt. So he came from the land of Canaan, and Egypt was, I looked this up on Wikipedia, I believe, and it said that Egypt was 527 miles away from Canaan, from home. And so just think about that with me for a moment. Um, his brother sold him into slavery, and then, and then the trip to Egypt, he was a slave, so, and they didn't have cars back there. Like, we have transportation. Imagine the journey. First of all, being put in a pit, thrown in a pit. He was 17 years old, a teenager. And then the journey from home, being separated from his father, being separated from his mother, from his brothers, from his family, taken to a foreign land, a foreign country. 527 miles. And you know how they treated slaves back then too, right? Right? And Reuben was planning on coming back to take Joseph. And Reuben means, oh, a son. And I talked about how there's sons and daughters that raise up in the house. When the enemy tries to come and bring destruction, and they say, not on my watch. You know, and then we ended with praying for those who are stuck in pits. And I just, I just want to just pause there for a moment because pits, it doesn't have to be like a literal pit. Like Joseph was in a literal pit, but you can be stuck in a mind frame, you know, a, a pit that you just can't get out of or, or a broken marriage. Or there's, there's so many different kinds of pits. You know, David talked about, David had an excellent word yesterday about patterns, how we can get stuck in patterns, unhealthy patterns. This can maybe be your pit. But today we're going to talk about from going to the pit to the prison, and then to the palace. We're going to cover all of that this morning. Is that, is that good? You know, I just, I want to stay there for a moment, though, on the pit, though, because I think it's amazing that the pit and being sold into slavery was actually the path to Joseph becoming one of the most powerful men in the land of Egypt. That it had to happen that way. And I'm sure there could have been other ways. But think about this with me for a moment. He was from the land of Canaan. He was one of the youngest of the 12 sons, totally not on the radar to be chosen as the second most powerful man in the land of Egypt next to Pharaoh, the least candidate. But God has his ways and God has his plans and they're so much higher than our ways and so much higher than our plans and he uses everything for good in our lives. I believe that. And maybe you're in this place and you've been through some hard things in your past or maybe through some hard things in your life or maybe you've been believing for healing for a long time. And I just want to encourage us that the father, good father, does not put sickness on his children. That's not what he does, but he can use anything for good in our lives if we let him. There's a scripture that I love that says that he works all things work together for good to those who love him and to those who are called according to his purpose all things all things think about your life those things that you are maybe going through or have been through he can use even that even that for your good i want to put i call this a famous scripture but i love this scripture genesis 50:20 if we can get that on the big screen. Joseph says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. 
You know, Joseph had to forgive his brothers. He had the power to get even with his brothers. This is called revenge. He could have thrown all of those brothers in pits. <laughs> Every single one of them, not just one. He said, I'm going to keep one. You guys go get, go back, get Benjamin, bring him back. If you really think, you know, you're saying the truth, you really are saying that you have another brother, go back, bring him. He could have thrown all of them in pits and taken all of their lives. But he forgave them and he blessed them instead. He was good to them. And I honestly don't think that he would have fulfilled his destiny if he had some resentment there, some bitterness in his heart. I want to put Romans 5.3 as well on the big screen. David shared the scripture, and I really like the scripture, so I'm going to use it as well. But it says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So he talks about like going through, persevering through some things to build character, to build some endurance. And I believe this is what was going on in Joseph's life. It wasn't easy, though. It wasn't. We can see this when he breaks down in front of his brothers weeping and crying. It was not easy. He did not get to see his mother live or even pass away. He was completely isolated and separated from his family for a long time. And maybe you're in here and you've been believing for healing for a long time. I got good news for you. Just hang tight with me for a little bit. You know, Joseph was sold into slavery, like we said, at the age of 17. And became the second most powerful man next to the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, at the age of 30. So think about that. Quite the journey, right? And then watch this. It wasn't until nine years later that he was reunited with his brothers. It wasn't until he was 39 years old. He received a promise from the Lord, a dream, when he was a teenager. You know, the number nine represents a time of birthing. He finally gave birth to a promise that God had given him when he was just a little boy, a teenager. Nine years, though, you know, he stepped into that role of, of being right next to Pharaoh, serving the land of Egypt, the wisdom, the strategies that God gave him. And yet still, I wonder, and I just think if there's anything that Joseph struggled with was doubt. God, you gave me this dream, and now he's in this position, and one year goes by, and two years go by, and three years go by, and four years go by, and five years, six, seven, eight, nine. It wasn't until nine years later that he actually saw the fulfillment of his dream and the brothers bowing down. God was developing Joseph's character, and Joseph had to be in a position of power that he was to be able to test his brother's character and their hearts. As his character was being refined, so were his brothers. He had to be in that position of power to test his brothers the way that he did and to do what he did. The Lord is so wise. And we can see in that story that their hearts had changed. They had become different men. When he claims to take Benjamin at the end and said, I'm going to take Benjamin and I'll release all y'all. You can go. And they were like, they were all fighting but for a different reason this time. They said, take me instead, put me in that pit and let Benjamin go. Their hearts were changed, their characters was changed. You know, I talked about doubt and something that Joseph struggled with when he was in that pit as a slave and then later in prison when he got accused of something that he didn't do. Now he's got these dreams and now I'm here and what's going on? And maybe that's you in this room. Maybe you have dreams in your heart, you're sick with something, whether it's in your body or in your spirit or in your soul. Maybe your soul, like King David so often talked about in Psalms, is downcast, it's discouraged. Maybe your heart is sick from a relationship that just isn't working out. Maybe it's a child of yours that isn't quite walking with the Lord, and maybe you're believing for one and the doubt is trying to come in. Maybe you need healing from some trauma that's happened in your past or dream like Joseph had that's taking longer than you thought or in ways that you didn't quite expect. You fill in that blank. Maybe fill in the blank. 
And you can think of that blank, that fill, and it's a place of confinement. You know, that's what the prison symbolizes. It symbolizes a place of confinement. The confine, confinement is defined as a place that's restricted in area or volume. It is cramped. And since synonyms for confinement is cramped, constricted, restricted, limited, confining, small, narrow, compact, tight, pinched, squeezed, pokey, uncomfortable, inadequate, meager. It's a place where you feel like you can't quite move or maybe be or have or do what you want. There's borders around you, so to speak. I'm not talking about boundaries. Boundaries are good. I'm talking about borders, a place of confinement. And God wants you to be in a place of freedom. Even with the restrictions that you feel that are placed on you, that were placed on Joseph. I just saw this picture, and I, I love this. When I was getting this ready, there was his, it was uh, extended because of the favor and the loving kindness of the Lord that was on Joseph's life. Even in the prison, it was extended. But it was a place of confinement. You know, the prison also represents a place where you have no control over your circumstances. No control. A place of confinement. You can't quite move. You can't quite do or be as you want. Maybe you're believing for healing and you're sick. And I know what it's like to have an injury. And you can't quite move or be as you want. Maybe it's something in your soul and you can't quite connect the way that you want. Or maybe you're hungering for deeper spiritual connection with the Lord and some, you're just believing for breakthrough and you just feel that place of confinement. You know, we see this in Joseph's life as a common thread where he has no control over his thir- circumstances. You know, the favor and the coat, even that was something that was out of his control. <laughs> even that. Um, being thrown in the pit, sold into slavery, accused of something he didn't do and then put in prison. On and on, we see this in the life of Joseph. Yet, there's one big yet. This is the good news. God was with Joseph. This was the common thread, the common theme in every story, in every chapter. In Joseph's life, it was the common thread being woven through his story that God was with Joseph. I want to put Genesis 39, 19 through 23 in the big screen, and I'm just going to end with this. This common thread makes all the difference, y'all. It makes all the difference in the world. It says, and when Joseph's master heard the words of his wife saying to him, this is the way your servant treated me, his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison, a place where the state prisoners were confined. So he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and loving kindness and gave him favor in the sight of the warden of the prison. I want to just stop and pause there for a moment. Can you imagine having favor in the prison and the warden letting you oversee all the other prisoners? That's how much favor you had. That's kind of unheard of. Like this prisoner is going to take care of all you other prisoners, just so you know. Like that's, that's crazy favor, right? He didn't even like have to keep an eye on him. That's the kind of favor that God blessed Joseph with. Okay, let's keep reading. And the warden of the prison committed to Joseph's care all the prisoners who were in the prison. And whatsoever was done there, he was in charge of it. The prison warden paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge. For the Lord was with him and made whatever he did to prosper. It's incredible. So I'm closing with some really good news. And I'm five minutes early. So (laughs) the good news is it doesn't matter, beloved, if you're in the pit, if you're in the prison, or if you're in the palace. Catch that with me. All that matters is the Lord is with you like he was with Joseph. That's the good news. That's the good news this morning. So it doesn't matter where you find yourself this morning. If you're in a place of confinement, if you're in a place that feels like a pit, maybe not a literal pit, but you're in that place or in the palace.
I want to pray with you this morning. Wave at me if you feel like this word is for you or something about this word resonated for you and you want me to include you in this prayer. Just wave at me and let me know I see those hands. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for each and every person that's here, God. I believe it's by divine appointment that you brought each and every one here, God. I thank you for this word. I thank you for this message, Lord. I pray that it would encourage us, that it would strengthen us, that it would challenge us, that it would inspire us like only your word can do. Your word is alive. And I thank you for bringing your word to life to us this morning, God. I thank you for that, Father. We receive the spiritual food, God, and we just say, Lord, have your way in our lives, Lord. Wherever, wherever we are, God, we, just, we need to know that you're with us. And I pray, God, that each and every one would see that common thread in their lives, Lord, that you're weaving through their story, and that they would be encouraged today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We have some announcements for you. We love you. We thank you for being here. We want to pray for you. We believe that God has something wonderful in store for you today. Uh, we have some announcements. Uh, polls this Friday. I want to encourage all you to come out to that. Um, and then some video announcements as well. Amen. Have a great day. You know it. You can feel it. You were made for more. More than status quo, more than average, more than you've been told, more is bursting to get out. The Ignite Internship will equip you for the life you are designed to live. Learn to hear God's voice, know your heavenly identity, operate with supernatural power, authority and leadership. You'll grow in prophetic and healing ministry, see signs, wonders and miracles, ignite greater passion for your heavenly father. Apply now for your upcoming school year. Jesus released the kingdom of heaven on earth. Now it's your turn.